Prism user recently we asked for some more information on how go, to go about using the uh, image contrast and luminosity tool. And so let's take a look at that today. Well, right away we can see that uh, our image data on the histogram is all concentrated here, whereas the way I've set this up to deliberately darken the image is to pull it all the way back here. Uh, a handy way of, of doing this automatically, and what I recommend you do, is take a look at the presets. Let me just move this over so we have a little bit more room on the screen. And the presets offer stellar, planetary, moon, or you can actually adjust these settings to your own uh, preferences. Let's just go to stellar image, and we get something that's pretty reasonable. Uh, planetary is another option, and that's perhaps a little better for what we're trying to do here. So the presets are a really useful feature to take some raw data and to turn it in immediately into something that's recognizable as a, as a pretty reasonable image. The way uh, we're trying to do this whole process, if you will, is we're trying to map a large range of values that we get from our CCD image, which are shown here, in this case, between the um, low and the high cut. And you can see how I, if I change the low cut the numbers change in the low cut box and the high cut similarly are changed when I change that. We're trying to map this range, which in this case goes from about 4,000 to 11,000 into 256 available grayscale levels on the screen. So that requires a, a little bit of finesse and a little bit of effort in order to get the, the best possible combination. And very often it's a personal choice and some people prefer a more contrasty image uh, other people prefer a, a much more subdued image, but again, it's it's very much a personal choice. So you, you set those two cut values, and then you can also use the slider once you've got the range pretty much where you want it, just to tweak it a little bit without adjusting the individual sliders. We also have the ability of flipping the uh, uh, black and white to a white on black capability, which in this case is not really all that useful, although it's kind of a neat look. Uh, but uh, is very useful in terms of looking for faint stars, asteroids, things of that nature. And the palettes give us the capability of using different palettes. Instead of the black and white, we have the ability of using the pink, the rainbow palette, or the uh, thermal palette, um, which can give some interesting effects. But for most of our purposes, we're going to stick with the black and white, and we'll use the normal uh, black and white type of palette. The Pluses and minuses here allow us to expand the histogram to explore it further uh, so we can see what we have uh, that we might be missing in terms of a component in the image. As it turns out with this image, most of this is just uh, some dark, uh, cool pixels which are really not of any particular interest to us. And all of that stuff below that level is going to get uh, put to black and everything above this level is going to get put to white. And so we've got a pretty good balance on that image the way it stands right now. The other thing you can do with an image in terms of stretching it, of course, is you can do some processing on it. And one of the handy things in PRISM is the log transform. We can specify the strength of the log transform, and I like to use a fairly weak transform myself, so something around 75%. What that does is it gives us a little bit more range. And let me just zero up this image a bit more uh, of values by using a logarithmic transform on the data. And we can change it around as we like. And you can start to see some more subtle details uh, within the darker areas that were previously invisible without the log transform. Of course, at any time, you can use the undo feature to undo the process and go back to where we were. The other capability you can use within PRISM to stretch images is the digital development processing, which we'll cover in a separate uh, video. But those are a few ideas. The, one of the key things I want to mention is that you'll notice this is in float. Uh, all the data that I process and use is always in a floating point format. Years ago, computers had trouble with floating points, so people recommended use 16-bit processing. Floating point was too slow. Those days are long gone. So in settings, when I go into software and I take a look at uh, CCD camera recording, you'll notice there's an option to get your pixel data as a 16-bit number. My advice is never check that box. Always grab the data and convert it right away into a floating point value. So just leave the default values alone. Work exclusively in floating point and you never have to worry about uh, any problems with truncation or limitations of the 16-bit format. 
So those are a few notions uh, as to how best to use the contrast and luminosity.